Today is Thursday, April 30th, 2020, and this is Evening Jesus. We're unpacking the topic of time this week, but before we dive into what the authors of Scripture have to say, let me remind us all of maybe the most profound truth when it comes to time. Here it is, that there's a cumulative value to investing small amounts of time in certain activities over a long period. In other words, the time we spend on our habits works like compounding interest. The same way that our money multiplies through compound interest, the effects of your habits multiply as you repeat them. They seem to make little difference on any given day, and yet the impact they deliver over the weeks, months, and years can be enormous. Little deposits over a long period of time has a big payoff. I mean, as an example, practicing the piano one time has no benefit in any single installment. But spend the next 10 years practicing 30 minutes a day, guess what? You're probably going to be a pretty decent piano player. Because small amounts of time over time in every important area of our lives makes all the difference in the world. Right? Again, this is this true in your spiritual life, your relational world, your career, your body, it all matters. But, but here's the thing, we don't do it all that often, right? And the reason I think we have such a hard time carving out time to create healthy habits is because there really is no immediate consequence, right? And as a result, we lose sight of the principle that we know in our hearts is absolutely true. This is a huge problem, and here's why. Because neglect is cumulative as well. Time magnifies the margin between success and failure, right? It will multiply whatever you feed it. Good habits make time your ally. Bad habits make time your enemy. Now, with all of that said, let me show you what an early Christian leader named Paul had to say about time. He said this, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. Okay, just quickly, here's what I want us to see in the passage. First, let's remember that the Bible did not fall out of the sky written in English in the 21st century. We just read a portion of a nearly 2,000-year-old letter written in Greek, right? And the English phrase we translate, making the most of every opportunity, is actually more literally translated, redeeming the time. Now, you may be asking, if it's literally redeeming the time, why would the translators write making the most of every opportunity? Well, I think they're not trying to change the meaning. What they're trying to do is just add a little punch in the English. Making the most of every opportunity has more punch than redeeming the time, but literally it's translated redeeming the time. Now, here's what's interesting. The little Greek word redeeming is actually a word that's used in mathematics in in the culture, in the first century, right? And literally it means this. Make sure you cash in your time for something of equal value. When you think about how valuable your time is, that it's a limited asset, the author Paul says, be careful, don't be careless, make the most of every opportunity, every minute, every day, redeem your time. Why? Because here's what we know, that neglect is cumulative. There's a point of no return in some areas of our life. There's a point of no return sometimes with our health, with our relationships. So be careful. Redeem the time. Make the most of every opportunity. Your life has so much to offer that you need to live into your potential. There's something that you have that the rest of the world needs. Right? And listen, I can't believe that we're actually in the seventh week of stay at home, sort of physical distancing pandemic paradise, right? And I wonder, how have you spent the last seven weeks? Are you making the most of every opportunity? Have you redeemed the last seven weeks? If not, start now. If you have, well done, keep going, endure, persevere. Remember, small deposits of healthy habits have a big payoff. Hey. Thanks for hanging out this evening, and I'll see you tomorrow.